Okay, taking yet another angle on SNS planning, we have Karina Hosenbos, who is the Advanced Practice Center Program Manager for Public Health Seattle and King County, presenting when good information isn't enough. Good morning, and thanks for the opportunity to talk about some risk communication strategies that we've employed in King County, and sometimes, despite best laid plans, good information doesn't, wasn't just good enough for us. And so with that, I'd like to share some of our oops moments and how we turned those, and develop, turned those into opportunities to develop some tools to help us overcome those challenges in the future. I'd like to start um, with a question by show of hands. How many of you have had a response or an event that didn't go quite according to plan? <laughs> oh, some of you went really well. Awesome. To see. Great. Not a lot of hands raised. Very good. Well, I'd like to share a moment when we did some translation for a hotline, and the Chinese hotline uh, translation came back that it's a line that's hot. And so we thought some of our Chinese members weren't really um, into calling a, a, hot, a line that is hot. So that led us to the development of some translation processes because we know across the country, not only in King County, we're seeing more and more people in our community for whom English is not the primary language. So we started looking at uh, the development of translation toolkit to support that idea of you start with the material to the dissemination, and what is that process in between? And what is um, one of the key areas was, how do you begin to identify what languages are you translating into? Translation is very expensive, and you don't have time to translate into every language. So how do you prioritize that? <coughs> so the toolkit talks about the identification of those languages by looking at data, school data, clinic data, in addition to census data. And we know in public health, we like to cram a lot of information on a fact sheet. And so this is also becomes expensive when you think about translation and word count. So what is, how can you be uh, distilling that information down with images or comics to make the message much more succinct and available to your audience? Also, with less words, it's easier to translate and more cost effective in the long run. But we also know it's not just about the printed materials, uh, the fact sheets, but media. How are you effectively using media? Radio, TV, print. But for some of our communities for whom you know, English is not their primary language, what are the other outlets, such as ethnic media outlets or community outlets? How can you be working with them in preparedness times for like a flu clinic? At building those relationships by buying ad space to advertise your upcoming flu clinic. So it's good to start building these lists in advance. And if you don't have a lot of ethnic communities, thinking about community newspapers to help support that message and building those relationships and preparedness times to leverage it so in a response they're covering your story. But as we've heard throughout this conference, it's, not, it's really about relationships. It's about building those relationships now. We know risk communication is social communication. People in the community will be getting your messages, but they will be checking in with their family members, their loved ones, trusted leaders, in order to verify that information before taking action oftentimes. So how are you building those relationships in advance and doing your community preparedness? I'd like to share a story of how we've kind of brought this together. In 2006, we had a winter storm. We had significant power outages. We had a significant number of carbon monoxide cases, and unfortunately, we even had some fatalities. We knew we needed to do better. So we looked at putting in a lot of these things into place, improving our translation processes, improving our relationships, particularly with immigrant and refugee communities who are particularly disproportionately impacted. And then, if we look forward to 2012, January 2012, we had a similar storm. We had power outages but we had 10% of the cases of carbon monoxide. We had no fatalities. This is a picture from my area hardware store. I didn't go put those flyers up. It was our getting out to communities and they were disseminating our messages. They were using the flyers that we had translated in advance through our translation practice and getting it out there. So it really is about building those communities, building those community partnerships so that you're not just doing all the work on your own, 
but you've got messengers out there disseminating the information and helping to convey that information. So I just would like to give a plug for the Advanced Practice Center and a number of tools that exist, not only the ones that I've talked about today, but to support all of the effective implementation, not just community preparedness or warning and notification. So thank you very much for your time.